It's all about this. It's all about the puppy. Um, and I want to tell you why, because not many people actually know why it's all about the puppy. What do you see when you see a puppy? Is this is this a good thing? Is this a good feeling? Yes. Yeah. Happy, vibrant, yes. passionate, yes. red. <laughs> yeah, drugs, great. <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know, just because I've got a personal story about the puppy doesn't mean that it doesn't also resonate with other people. It's a happy flower, isn't it? Yeah. It's a yes. good flower. Mm. Um, when I was, in 2005, I had my son Sam, who is now 11 and a half, and that was going to be it. We were just going to have one kid. That was fine. He was lovely. He was awesome. The dynamic of the family was perfect. We're not having any more children. Then in 2011, I was like, oh, I do fancy another. I do kind of fancy another. You know, I'm 37, 38, or one another before I, you know, my time is done. So we had another. And um, we had a miscarriage. So that child was not meant to be. Then we had, we um, got pregnant with Poppy in the March. And that was meant to be because she was born on the 1st of December 2012. 1 12 12. Now, I'm a home birth mum. I had Sam at home, <laughs> an amazing birth, very, very empowering. You have two midwives, it's a great event. It's all lovely. Poppy was a planned home birth. We set up the water pill and it's in the lounge and we moved the sofa into the kitchen and the kids are watching telly because Sam wanted to be there and my cousin wanted to be there and Savannah wanted to be there. And it was a big family event, it was really gorgeous. Then um, we went for a walk, because that's always good when you're gonna give birth, you've gotta go for a walk. And we came back, I had a bit of a nap, and I woke up and like, okay, right, we're in labour, we're doing this, shit, we're doing this. Okay, phone the hospital, because they've got to send the midwives out. There are no midwives available, is what they said. You're supposed to get two. You're already booked in. You've got two. It's the NHS. I know it's different in other countries, but you get two. And I said, okay, but I'm literally, you know, <clears throat> going to give birth. We're having five minute long contractions at the moment, so it's going to be really swift. Bearing in mind, I gave birth an hour later. This was a very, very short birth. So there was no time to faff about and go to hospital. I got in the pool and Mimi is on the phone saying, but you need to send a midwife because she's in labor, she, she's doing this. No, we're not sending any midwives. And I'm sitting in the pool and I'm looking into my husband's eyes and Sam is there as well and I'm looking into his eyes and you, you, you're kind of just thinking, okay, this is, this is my reality. I'm giving birth on my own. I'm doing this. And I looked into his eyes and he held my hands and we're over the, you know, the curve of the birth pool. He said, we can fucking do this. I'm like, we can, we can do this. That's why oh. I'm a bit shaky, because it was, it was I like intense. We are doing this on our own. We are giving birth on our own. Don't get me wrong, I'm not in the savannah. I am in a house in Birmingham, in a city that, you know, we're in the first world, but that is still, it's a big thing. And Poppy was astounding. For me, this is the most powerful moment of my life. But for her, it was also the most powerful moment of her life because she birthed herself. And I sat there and I watched her birth herself because what happens when the baby's head comes out is that it comes out backwards. So you see the back of their head and then you pause for a few minutes and the baby turns and you then see the side of its head, so the ear, and the nose is facing you know, to the inside of your leg. She did all of that while I watched, I did nothing. I'm literally watching this happen wow. as this baby births herself. Wow. She was completely great because there's no oxygen and, and she's just she's being fed by my placenta still so she's completely great and you're looking at this dead baby basically because they're great you think oh my god because <laughs> it doesn't look great so she's there <laughs> and then what happens is with the next contraction one shoulder pops out and then the other shoulder I'm again I'm doing nothing I am doing nothing she is doing this no I am doing nothing I was sitting there in the pool with Sam and Richard watching her birth herself. I am not doing anything, okay, seriously. So out come the shoulders and she slides out and I, I collect her beautiful body and I bring her up to me and she takes her first gasp of breath and she turns pink instantly, which obviously, that's a good thing. It's <laughs> a good thing, because they have this thing where they call it the Apgar score and it's about how pink your body is in the, in the first five minutes after birth and you know how pink your toes are and your tips of your fingers is the oxygen getting around the body she was perfectly pink and perfectly gorgeous and i breastfed her in the pool and about 45 minutes later i got out of the pool and we did all the placenta stuff on the sofa and then the ambulance people arrived the ambulance people arrived so they arrived after we'd done all of that after i'd cut the umbilical cord after i'd done everything oh, wow. okay so this is an incredibly empowering experience I then get told. That's what I thought. 
I then got told by this ridiculous ambulance person that they were going to take my baby from me um, if I didn't agree to go into hospital with them because the baby needs to be checked out. And I said, look at her, she's perfect. She's perfectly pink, she's breastfeeding. She is amazing. And do you know what? You are not taking this from me. Right now, I am in a position of incredible, raw, pure power. And there ain't no bloody bugger in the world taking my baby from me. I was, you should see the photo, because Mimi took a photo of that moment. <laughs> I was not a happy lady. I was like, Don't, you are not taking my baby from me. We did this, and we did this together, and there is no separation going on. Um, the reason that all of my business since then has changed is because my heart was so massively open during that process and it hasn't shut since. Oh. It is just always open and always, you know how much you cry when your heart is open? That is how I feel all the time. And before Poppy, before that process, I was a different person. I worked with people, I've been doing this for 2000, since 2005, my business, and, but it was transactional. People would come to me, they would give me money, they would go away with the website. That was it, it was transactional. Since Poppy, I decided that I didn't want to work that way anymore and I wanted to work with heart-centered people who were beautiful and generous of spirit and generous of soul. And so my taking action is that now, the way I run my business is I get on Facebook and I give, and I give, and I give. And when people have tech problems, I help them and I don't ask for money. And they say, can I pay you? And I say, no, I'm here to be generous of soul and generous of spirit. Because when my heart opened, when I gave birth to Poppy, it didn't shut, it never shut. And I have so many clients who say to me, but don't you ask for money? You can't give away all your stuff. You can't be that generous. Well, you can, because what I'm doing is I'm manifesting beautiful, wonderful, universal credit all the time. Yeah. Because I'm giving to the universe, I'm giving to people, I'm giving to heart-centered entrepreneurs all the time, constantly over-delivering, and the universe has got my back, and the universe looks after me. If you want to be the person you want to be, you've got to take action. You've got to get out there. You've got to love the people you want to serve. You've got to serve the people you want to serve. You've got to give, give, give. It's all about the poppy. Wow. <laughs>